Hi, welcome back to Camp Canine, Badger's Cottage and the Vegetable Garden. It's been a long summer and I have failed to put up for, uh, videos and um, I have been harvesting really well this, um, this summer. I did lose my, a lot of my tomatoes due to blight this year um, but everything else has been pretty great and I've been planting some, some new species of, of different uh, different things <laughs> this year and um, it's been amazing to see how how the garden has grown so it's looking very much like a jungle I would say I have definitely accomplished this sort of food forest this year uh, so my let's let's work our way around this is Winifred by the way this chicken down here she doesn't like sticking with the other chickens so this was the extension plot that we did this year um, because of COVID decided to go and do some extra planting and in here we have right at the back a rather successful brassica bush going. You can see a selection here we've got some brussels and some uh, broccoli growing at the back. You can see the kale is this darker so we've got the darker purple kale that's growing here so I can actually start eating that I'd forgotten that it was even here so I haven't actually started eating it we have some cabbages growing uh, these are little ditty ones here uh, some of these have got some got a little bit larger oh you can see some brussels in the back there uh, there are some cauliflowers here but I couldn't tell you I'm not that good on my brassicas to know exactly where I am but there's a nice beautiful um, cabbage savoy I think coming up there so I'm not brilliant with my uh, brassicas I'm not a huge fan of brassicas myself most of them I could give or take but they should be in your diet because they are they do provide you with essential nutrients and of course the the caterpillars love them now my plan had been to have nasturtiums growing here as you will see in the rest of the garden the nasturtiums are going crazy the nasturtiums never <laughs> never grew up over here so i spent the year each day i would wander through the garden pick off um caterpillars and throw them over the fence basically or in with the chickens although the chickens would not eat them uh as most of you know who probably grow brassicas they have a lot of huge external leaves the edible bit that you eat is the bit in the middle and then they have these massive leaves on the outside i'm quite a strong believer that um that they're there for the caterpillars <laughs> basically although i will only let a certain amount of caterpillars munch their way through those larger leaves but my garden isn't big enough for those huge outside leaves anyway so if the caterpillars want them then yep they can have them and if they last long enough on there before i pick them off and throw them over the fence then well done to the caterpillars so i have potatoes growing all over the garden and this line here of these potato bags are my potato bags for this year i have harvested a couple of them so far um, and then I just thought that I would just leave them there to store and I'll pick on them when I need to pick on them But we have a whole new bunch of um, new potatoes sprouting now So uh, I must have another harvest of potatoes in those bags, which is really great You can see them here. I wasn't expecting them The rest of this um, extension bed is pretty much um, finished now, although we do have a few other things. So you can see I haven't um, cropped down the, uh, chop, chopped down the last of the corn here. Uh, I've, I've done it here, but not on the other side. And in amongst those were some, some beans. I can see I've got a few beans here that I could just harvest is literally coming to the end now there's not much left on them at all um, all the others seem to have pretty much gone the squash were the other thing that were grown here so in my extension basically I had the brassica bush along the back because brassicas take up an awful lot of space they spill over they've got huge leaves etc etc and so I decided I would do a bush of a, a, a hedge of them this year and then in this front section here was mainly the corn, the beans, and the squash. And it was all built basically around this frame and beds around it. Next year, I think I'm going to just spread them all out over this whole section. So most of the squash have been harvested. 
I'm just looking to see if we've got anything left to harvest. I know we have one giant one over here that I am waiting to um, be able to cut through here in order to harvest it because I cannot cut through here, I have tried. I'm pretty sure that everything else squash-wise on this side has finished. Uh, what we do have growing are these mini cuc um, cucubits, achokas. Uh, I don't quite know how to pronounce that and I'm trying to find you one right now. Um, basically, we lost a load of our um, squash because the achokas took over this entire frame. I didn't have... I, I had no idea they were so prolific, basically. They were a massive, massive plant that just trailed like a weed everywhere um, and created these really, really strange little fruits, which I'm now trying to spot for you. There's got to be some that are big enough to be able to show you, although I did do a good harvest through here a little while ago. If I see one, I will show you. I mean, the ones that the ones that I can see are a little bit small. Here you go. Here's one. There. So they grow as a vine like this through and over everything. They covered this entire thing when the um, willow got a bit longer earlier on in the summer. They were climbing up the willow. Uh, they will climb over everything. Probably if I do them again, I will climb them up the fence. I've got the fence that runs all the way along here and it would be lovely to have that covered by some sort of vine. So I think next year if I do these, then I will do them along the fence and climb them, climb them up strings. So basically they are, when they're, whoops, <laughs> when they're small, they taste like cucumber and you can just munch into them they're they're pretty solid but as they get a little and then that's when they're a little bit smaller than this and then as they get to this stage you can see that's a bit of a spongy kind of feel to them the insides start to go hollow as the seeds grow in them and then you can cut through these and basically inside you will find these seeds there we go See it like that? And then you can basically treat them, cut them open and treat them, like remove the seeds and treat them like a pepper. They cook, they cook absolutely fine, sliced um, as a pepper in any of your dishes. There you go. Um, those were my little cucubits. But there are other cu cu cucubits growing in the garden. I tried another one this year as well. Oh, before we leave, before we go and see that, and leave the extension. The other part of the extension was the uh, chard that I grew in a line down here. These were all directly planted as seeds into the ground. And you can see they're quite small. Um, they've still got the shade of the of a lot of the willow above. During the winter, the, those leaves on the willow will go completely and the chard down here will get full light for the whole of the winter and have the opportunity to grow. I'm just going to put my little fence up, otherwise the chickens will be in there eating all my brassicas. So this is my extension here, as we called it, the new bit this year. And then these are my two arches and my raised beds. And we're going to go in and have a look at them now. Though uh, <laughs> they are collapsing a little bit and I'll explain that in a minute. So here we are at the two arches. Now this arch is doing fine, this is great. But then again, it's hardly got anything growing over it. This arch, on the other hand, we've had to prop it up. Prop it up. Here. <laughs> um, because it's absolutely collapsing. And the reason for that is that I... Um, so, when I built these two arches, I couldn't afford what are known as cattle grids or the, or the wire mesh that, the, that you'll see elsewhere in the... Um, in the garden so I put it together with just universal stock fencing which worked fine um, but towards the end it, it's it's great for the peas it's great for the beans but when I start when the squash when they go off and the squash starts to trail over it the squash then starts to pull it down a bit so 
at the end of last year when the squash was um, growing on it I had to support it and again this year I've had to support it as well so I'm hoping that um, over the winter and the spring next year we'll move it over to the proper mesh and it'll be nice and sturdy for the rest of time <laughs> that's the plan anyway um, but this year growing on here we have a new squash it's a cucurbit um, it's another ochada so it's a bit like those little ones that you was, that I showed you a minute ago but these are these grow a lot lot bigger um, but they do get quite hollow and again you, you use them in the same way they taste like a cucumber and that when they're solid then um, they are just like a cucumber and when they are as they get older and the seeds start growing in them you just cook them like you do peppers so let's find a see if I can find a so look this this is this is when they're tiny I mean they will literally taste like a burst of cucumber um, at this stage here uh, see if I can find you a reasonably sized one no that looks like another large one there I think I harvested them all. Here's another one. This is this will be this will be tasting nicely of cucumber. Nope. Do you know what? I think I harvested most of them. So the other squash that is growing on here is the trombocino, which is the long one that grows like this. Now I have harvested the large ones in here and they grow, they will grow, I grew one last year to about four and a half, four foot long, four and a half foot long, something like that. I normally harvest them when, I like, if I get one that's three foot long, I, I like a three foot long one, I've got to say. But the great thing about this is even if they don't get pollinated, this is, this is the, um, the seed sack here this bit here holds the seeds and this bit here is just the flesh and if they're not pollinated that properly then the the seed sack doesn't develop but you still get this length here so what you end up with is a very sort of like brown tip or weak tip that tends to to drop off I'm trying to see if I can see one for you but I, I can't I think I've been through here too recently and took them all off and gave them to my gave the ends to my chickens but the long bit here you can you can still harvest that you can still use that it's like just having a courgette basically um, and squash is basically a courgette they come in all various different sizes and shapes but um, they the a squash a, a, a cucumber no sorry a courgette is a summer squash basically that means that its skin is not hard enough to store for over winter and, and potentially up to a year the winter squashes are the ones that have got the harder skins that you can put them into storage and they will stay quite happily for months and months um, without going off um, the inside texture of them the courgettes are maybe a little bit more seedy um, but as you might compare the seediness of a cucumber to the seediness of a courgette, so you might compare the seediness of a courgette to the seediness of, a, of, of some of the other squashes. The patty pan, for example, has very few or little seeds at the point where I harvest it. I normally harvest it when it's still quite small, about the size of a decent um, jacket potato. And that's one of the ways I like to cook it as well, as a jacket potato. And squash will take on the taste of anything that it's cooked with. It kind of loses its own taste and it develops the taste. Oh, look, there's a decent sized one. There we go. I knew they were around here somewhere. So that's a nice size to, to harvest, this size here. You'll still get a cucumber taste, but you'll, you'll get a decent size mouthful out of that. Um, and it's so nice. I mean, the cucumbers, they can be really difficult to grow. And I'm, I'm getting a bit sort of like, oh, about cu growing cucumbers. Um, these guys, when the cucumbers have done their bit, these guys are still growing. You're still getting fresh cucumber taste. So that's wonderful. These in here are my 
chard that I planted from little seedlings and they've done us well over the summer. I could have harvested more, I could have eaten more. Um, this is a little uh, tomato that it has um, self-seeded there, a little volunteer. Um, oh look on here, I could have come straight over here. Look, we've got some lovely cucurbits, the chockers. These are slightly different, They're, they've got the same similar name but slightly different. Oh, here's another trompasino here. That's a short one. I think I, I did take all the long ones off. So there we go. So those are, those are our um, double arched vegetable beds here. The, so then the, the beds that go either side of them this bed here that runs all the way up here it's got our carrots in it I have got to harvest those carrots I really need to get to those carrots you can leave carrots in the ground as storage over the winter it does work but equally I'm pretty sure I've got mice in this bed so I think that they will eat them if I leave them in there over um, the winter and then on this bed over here we'll walk on through to the the other arch bed this is where I had the beetroot this year and the beetroot really didn't do very well I, wa I wasn't impressed at all with the beetroot and those are my at the back are brassicas that are two years old that I left in there and I just let I, it, they were my experiment what would happen if I just left brassicas to be eaten by um, by the caterpillars what what would happen to them would they get eaten to pieces and they haven't been eaten to pieces but there's not much that I could actually harvest from there. So what I've been doing is I've just been pulling their leaves off as treats for the chickens, um, but ensuring that they've still got plenty of leaf left in order to grow. So we'll see. We may get some broccoli out of there, I'm not sure. Um, I have got, I have got a, a few, little um beetroot in there that i could i could harvest but i kind of to be honest with you i forgot they were there and so they're probably past their best now um right in here we've got some this year's leeks that i planted so they will be ready next year i hope and then <laughs> my ground cherry forest my ground cherries, so I've never planted ground cherries before. I did. Okay, let's, let's get you so you can see the ground cherries better. So I did decide that I wanted to try ground cherries a couple of years ago and I couldn't even get the seeds to germinate and that was really frustrating for me. This year I got the seeds to germinate. <laughs> I got too many seeds germinated. And of course, me being me, I wanted to get most of them into the ground. So I did, and they were teeny weeny little plants. I had no idea how big they were gonna get. <laughs> they have literally taken over. They are now the forest that is my vegetable garden. And I don't mind because most of the other things have, have come to an end. So when, when a lot of the real fresh stuff, like, I, I would have gone out and been picking little cherry tomatoes in the summer in order to eat. Those tomatoes are now not available, so when I'm wandering around the garden, I can't pick on them anymore, but I can pick on the ground cherries. So ground cherries, they grow in a lantern like this. So the, these are the plants, and I never knew that they would grow so big. Um, these ones here, I try to support them because they... They were collapsing. I do have a path through here, so I was trying to support them, but they've knocked the supports off as well now. So, but I will do better next year. Um, the lanterns, they kind of change color, and then eventually they go, I'm trying to find you one now. They go to like this, this here, this brown color. Now you can catch them at this colour um, and um, pick them off of the plant at this colour or you can find them on the ground. They're fine, they're protected by these. So then you open up one of these.
take the lantern off of them and there you go there's your little brown cherry mm. absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous I, I don't actually know how to explain the taste some that are some have a little bit of a sharp citru citrusy taste to them and others go straight to the sweet but they are like sweeties in the garden right so they, <laughs> they grew all the way over here took over my whole plant path but I also <laughs> planted them on the edge of this path going down here so this is my giant arch <laughs> over, over the two um, uh, boats that you would have seen earlier on in the year and this all this bush that you can see here these are all ground cherries so they are completely and utterly out of control I can't walk past without um, knocking um, wow look at that mm. Mm. they're just gorgeous yeah I'm constantly stepping over Stepping over ground cherries in order to move around in this garden now. So there we go, there's the arch, and these are all my ground cherries here. Absolutely crazy. So, um, the arch, let's talk about the arch. I planted melons to grow up the arch this year. This is the closest thing I've got to a melon so far. I have no idea what it is. Absolutely no idea. Um, there's a couple of them. To be fair, this is the biggest. This is the biggest one. I've never seen a melon look like that. Maybe I should have read the package before I before I planted the, the seeds. Anyway, so I planted noodle beans. I was really looking forward to the noodle beans um, to go over the arch this year, and they did not grow. Don't know what happened to them. They disappeared. Absolutely disappeared um the melons just didn't look like they were going to do anything at all and um i was just i'm going to just point this so that you can actually see it whilst we're talking about it um so yeah the the melons i didn't i didn't think they were going to do anything uh at all they just weren't growing and then all of a sudden i got this one that trailed one from one side and one from the other side trailed over the top and I thought oh they are growing it's a bit late in the season um have they actually got any time to create any melons and this is what I've ended up with so um we move on and it's a bit of a mess but hey this is my garden this is you know in progress so along here I had the in-ground potatoes planted and I've harvested one lot of them and I've got the other lot which is closer to the fence to to harvest but they're sharing the bed with the beans which I thought had finished for the season I ignored them and then today I had to harvest these off of them I had no idea so on both sides of the fence along the a gate along this side there's the gate and uh, along that side I've got the beans growing and the and note to self nothing seems to want to grow on this side of the garden um, this side prolific the beans didn't do too badly on that side uh, but the this was along here behind the nasturtium that you can see now was a squash bed and I don't think I got two squash probably off of it um, whereas the one that was the other side of the boat which is along here, which is now overgrown as well. Um, I've had quite a lot of squash off of there, so that wasn't bad, but that's now come to an end. I don't think there's any summer squash left. Oh, look, I tell a lie. But is there enough of the summer left to get anything out of these? Now, I could, I could make a decision here. I could decide to harvest them as minis um and then i could pickle them uh that's one option if you are if you've like got absolutely tons and tons of squash or um courgette and you don't know what to do with them and 
you're ready to pull up your plants and you've got lots of little ones and you know there's not enough summer left pickle them I've been looking into pickling this year I've not really done a huge amount but I have done two jars I'm hoping to do more anyway I can't do the potatoes so I've got this 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 run along here it's not a, it's not a very big run but it is a run of in-ground potatoes I don't know how many I've got in there to harvest the odd one pops its head out which I'm guessing is due like this one here look so there you go there's a, a couple of potatoes they're they're coming to the surface now um, generally because the cats or the rabbits come in here and, and scratch around and that's what they they do they reveal the I'm trying, to find, I'm trying to find a way through the forest to go and put these potatoes in my in my box um okay so whilst i was just on my way around here i did spot i don't know if i spot it on the way back again i might have lost it oh no it's just the end so there is an end there of a little um squash that's a by the looks of it well it could be the end of anything but i think that was possibly a pate pan i'm not sure anyway so that this bed here already now to be dug up and these raised beds here in the back in this section this section and that section there and the other raised beds around me that are are pretty much empty apart from the station they all have my tomatoes in it and they're all they're all gone now this boat did have um the boats both had tomatoes in them i then did plant some this, these believe it or not are a load of radish that I've planted in here and underneath the radish right there are some spring onions I don't know if you caught did you catch the sight of the spring onions they're right in there the grassy looking things um, but as you've probably noticed if I'm not overgrown with the ground cherries I'm overgrown with the nasturtium now I can't complain because they are beautiful and they have got this very sort of like radishy, earthy scent to them and they are giving me a beautiful, lovely touch of yellow and orange um, into my garden. But I didn't plant any of these. I didn't plant any of these. Let's just have a look at how many I've got. They are growing around everywhere. Look at them. They are a carpet. They are probably going to be my ground cover for the winter. Just look at this. Look at the amount of colour here. I didn't plant any of these. These are all volunteers. So I plant nasturtiums to go round just beautiful aren't they they're just beautiful so I plant nasturtiums to go round my plants in the summer and I plant them mainly as a deterrent for or not a deterrent really deterrent is the wrong word it's for the caterpillars the caterpillars love beyond anything else to munch on these leaves so they will leave my cucumbers, my peppers, my tomatoes, whatever, whatever, you know, even some of the brassicas, they will leave some of them in order to eat the nasturtium. So I plant the nasturtium all the way around. What happens is that then the caterpillars eat most of the leaves. The flowers finish blooming, they create their seed and they drop their seed everywhere they drop their seeds in the in the beds on the floor on the ground outside of the beds and i'm meant to go round and i'm meant to collect these le these seeds they're tiny little round things if i see any oh look see all of these here can you see these 
these are all nasturtium seeds all dropped by the nasturtium that was here in the spring